Welcome back everybody. As you probably guessed from the title and the thumbnail, we are going over two lights today. So you're getting like a twofer for this video. Uh, so the first one that came out anyway is the Sig Sauer Foxtrot 1X. They had a Foxtrot 1 that is now discontinued. And then just recently, earlier this year, this little guy came out and this is the Foxtrot 2 from Sig Sauer. Uh, there's some similarities for sure. And there are definitely some differences. And what we're going to do today is show you guys the beam pattern at various distances at night and uh, basically go over the features of each of these lights. And for beam pattern wise, we're going to be comparing it to this guy. It's the Streamlight TLR1HL. And I realize they're kind of a different class of light because, of course, this takes two CR123As, whereas both of these only take one CR123. Uh, um, so because of that, you're obviously going to have a power disparity. But the reason I wanted to use this is it's probably the most popular pistol light in America. So I wanted to use it because a lot of you have it. So it's a good base of comparison that you guys will recognize. So anyway, a few things they have in common. Number one, the bezels do screw on. And with a quarter turn on either one of them out, it's a lockout mode. So that way, if you're traveling, you have them in a range bag or something like that, then you don't have to worry about it accidentally turning itself on. They both use, like I said, a CR123A battery, and uh, they both have the ability to get pretty hot, especially for little lights. So they have that little warning on there. Big differences are going to be output, which you guys will see here in just a second, and then the interface on them. So uh, with our Foxtrot 1X here, basically it has a paddle system which I know some of you guys like, and you just press and hold for your momentary, and then you can click and get your constant on. Then uh, over here with our Foxtrot 2, uh, there's a couple things to mention on interface. Number one, you can program it three different ways in order to program it. You just press down on both tabs at the same time. It'll blink, and then you'll go through the different modes. But I have it on the factory mode because, uh, factory shipping mode, because I think that's what most people want anyway. I don't really know why anyone want any other mode. But basically, it has these two toggles here, and they operate independent of each other. So like they don't switch or anything like that like you would have on a light like this um, so basically if you press down and hold you're going to have your momentary and even if you tap it you're still going to have momentary in order to get constant on you just have to push up so uh, up is your constant and then down no matter what is going to be your momentary i do like that the one I guess concern, I guess you would say of that mode is a lot of folks like to run these little lights on top of like a PCC type of setup. And if you do that, obviously you're going to naturally just hit it, right? You're going to turn it with the constant on. Is it a big deal? I don't know. Mod light, you know, their pistol light is like that and people seem to love it. So uh, just know that though, going forward, if you want that ability for just the constant on when it's on top of a rail, um, this is going to be a little more ergonomic, the 1X. So with that, let's check out the beam pattern of these lights and then come back and sort of wrap it up with my thoughts overall. For those of you unfamiliar with the backyard setup here, that spot there where the wood fence meets the iron fence is approximately 35 yards away. And then behind the, that, rather, those trees are anywhere from 35 to 45 yards away. And the hotspot that you see here is from the Foxtrot 1 at that distance and you guys can see here kind of how the spill works it kind of just falls off there's no real hard line on it so you're basically getting probably 170 degrees of actual illumination but you know obviously it falls off pretty quickly once you get away from that hot spot before going any further i should note that my camera is set to manual we do have about a quarter of a moon illumination so it's not completely dark out here but it's completely dark where i live if you will for tonight it's not going to get any darker for the rest of the night so with that uh, this right here is the output that you see from the foxtrot 2 and again very similar beam patterns uh, the intensity definitely looks a little bit better here with the foxtrot 2 versus the one but still you're getting a lot of spill not quite as much though, maybe 10 degrees less I would say than the Foxtrot one. And uh, we'll compare them here back to back in just a second. And as a control, I did bring out a Streamlight TLR1 HL 1000 lumen model because so many of you guys have that light. So just to compare it to, that's what th that looks like at this distance. I believe this is a 27,000 candela light. And again, that's what it looks like. And we will do a quick comparison here next. Here we have the output from the Foxtrot one that you guys just saw. And that right there next to it is the Foxtrot 2. You guys can get an idea. A little bit whiter light here on the Foxtrot 2 than here on the Foxtrot 1. Again, Foxtrot 2 and Foxtrot 1. Again, we have the Foxtrot 1, and that is the Streamlight 
TLR. You should see it's just much more intense with the stream light. Now you're seeing the Foxtrot 2, and again, the stream light. Put them kind of up in the trees, you guys can see the difference there. Wider hotspot for sure on the stream light TLR1, which I wouldn't have expected, uh, but definitely more focused with the Foxtrot 2 than with the TLR. We've moved down to looking across the lake and we'll turn on the Foxtrot 1. And basically from where I'm at, uh, to that little fishing shack there. It's probably about 130 yards. The lake here, uh, shoreline to shoreline is about 110 yards. I'm about 10 yards back. That little fishing shack is about 10 yards up. And basically that's what it looks like here with the Foxtrot one. Let me slide my camera over a little bit. There we go. When I zoom in, you get a better idea of what I actually see here with my human eye with the light. So if somebody was standing out there, I would definitely be able to see them. If they're holding something in their hand, would I be able to tell? I don't know. I definitely wouldn't be able to ID what it was. Uh, but again, it does have a nice wide pattern there. And that little bush right here is still illuminated even when I have the center of the light out there on the shack. And now we have the Foxtrot 2. You guys can see there how that looks. And it definitely is just a little bit more intense in the hot spot for sure. Uh, I would definitely be able to tell someone was out there. I would probably be able to tell if they had something in their hand or not. Positive ID, still a little bit iffy on that one. Again, we will back it out just to let you guys see the pattern, but it's definitely got some intensity for sure, especially for a light that's kind of little. And again, sort of as a standard bearer, we have the stream light. You guys can see there, the intensity is a little bit more even than what we had with the Foxtrot 2. Again, that's the TLR. And then if I turn that out, and then the Foxtrot 2. So you guys can see again, you're just getting a little bit more intensity with the TLR. And if we back it out there, that is the stream white TLR. What you can see with it, if you look there up in those trees, and then here by contrast, we have the Foxtrot 2. We'll turn them both on high. And this is the stream light. And then the Foxtrot 2, stream light, Foxtrot 2. Now you're looking at the output from the Foxtrot 1. And I'm going to turn the Foxtrot 2 on as well. And you guys can see this is the Foxtrot 2, Foxtrot 1. You just get a little bit more detail with the 2 than the 1 and the 2. Now that y'all have seen the beam comparison, there's a few things I wanted to point out before we close the video out because we haven't covered them yet. Uh, so both of them come with a 1913 or, you know, Picatinny insert, uh, and they also come with a Glock insert. So you can switch between whichever one you want to do so. It's very easy to do so. And one thing that's cool about these lights is that when they're obviously unscrewed and unmounted, um, you can switch the position. It has each, each one of them has a four position insert so that that allows you to get the switches whichever one you're using, as close to as far away as you know your thumbs or index finger, depending on how you want to use it, as you personally want with your specific gun. Everybody's hand size is different. Everybody's using different guns. So it really does give you a lot of customization in terms of the actual position there with that system. Uh, the Foxtrot 2 comes with a number of different uh, toggle switches you can switch them out uh, if you want a bigger one if you want a smaller one whatever the case may be but again i left it the factory configuration i would imagine most folks are going to do that uh, additionally when you screw these in both of them have those little c clips on there so that way it prevents it from unscrewing and walking out uh, so there is that a big difference between the two other than the output that you guys just saw is going to be price point uh, so our foxtrot 1x I think the MSRP is like $79. I know SIG doesn't do MSRPs anymore, but that's like the high like list price I've seen on several websites. And then our Foxtrot uh, 2 here, I believe is $169, but street price, you see this around $139. Uh, both of these have been on sale. Both of these have also sold out. So uh, the supply and demand of these is a little bit uh, iffy right now. I'm filming this in October of 2022 right now. Uh, it seems that when they come in stock, they sell out very, very quickly. So there is that. And another thing to point out is that both of these say assembled in the United States States. So with that, I would imply from that that they're not made in the United States. That said, there's not a lot of weapon lights that are anymore just due to uh, lack of capabilities that we have for some crucial components. That's a video for another day. Anyway, what do I think of them overall? Well, they've been 100% reliable. I've had zero issues with either of them. Um, which one do I prefer? If I had to pick one, it would be the Foxtrot 2, just because I'm so used to the rocker type lights and rocker type systems. That said, it's totally a preference 
training issue. I have zero issues with paddle type lights as well. It really is just a preference issue in my opinion. I do like the additional uh, candela that you get out of the Foxtrot 2 as well. And again, for the price point, the size and the weight of these, which is also important, they're very lightweight when compared to something like this. I think they perform very, very well. And uh, that's really all I have for you on the lights. Other than that, you guys have seen the output. You guys have seen the interface. So let me know what you think down below in the comment section. You can also let me know at my various social media sites that you see here on your screen. If you're not following me at any of them, uh, fix it. Just go over there and follow me at, at those sites because I post deals on things like this and lots of other things on my social media. Uh, additionally, if you guys are subscribed here, thank you. If you're not subscribed and you like this type of video, definitely hit the subscribe button. We do a lot of light reviews around here and uh, hit the notification bell as well. If you've done both of those and you're not seeing two to four videos a week here on the channel, it's because you're being censored. So in order to combat that, you can sign up for my email at the website here on your screen. This specific email goes out once a month and it has all of the videos since the previous month's email. So that way there's no Big Tech Giant censoring your eyes from my content. And then additionally, for deals, we have a daily deals email. And any of the stuff that we review, lights, lasers, ammo, guns, et cetera, accessories, um, if it's in if it's on sale rather, and it's the cheapest anywhere that I know of, it goes in my daily deals email and it has six or seven of the best deals that we find around the internet. And that way I've already done the price comparisons and all that stuff. So it hopefully saves you some time and some money as well. So definitely recommend signing up for that. And with that, that's all I have for you. Thank you all for watching. I appreciate it. I look forward to seeing everybody in the next video.